Hello, everyone. Welcome to How to Dominate Your Market with Instagram. Uh, everyone, I want you to all give shout outs in the comments section. It should be in your lower right hand corner. Just give us a shout out where you're from. Uh, what do you represent, buyers or sellers? We additionally have some polls at the bottom for you to answer and additionally um, opportunities to either ask questions yourself or answer the questions that we have provided. All of those are linked in the bottom for you guys to take a look at. So we're going to wait just about one more minute um, before we go ahead and get started, but definitely use the chat as an opportunity to even network. <laughs> Hi, Brandon. How are you this morning? Hello, Michael from Denver. Portland. Woohoo! Oh my gosh, Tracy, I'm originally from Ohio. <laughs> so exciting. People from all over. San Diego. Austin, Texas, Colorado Springs. Welcome, welcome everyone. Who is ready to learn how to freaking dominate Instagram? <laughs> Where is Ohio? <laughs> oh, we're in. I'm originally from um, a small city called Mansfield, but lived in Cincinnati for about a decade. So a little bit of all over, north and south. All righty, you guys, out of respect for time, I want to go ahead and get started. Uh, we are so excited for you guys to be joining us today. Um, so thank you for taking the time to join us on this webinar. We're just really excited to share this information with you. Um, I wanted to briefly take a moment to introduce myself and introduce my team who is assisting me in this webinar. My name is Rachel. I'm a marketing manager at Virtuance. I handle all of the social media um, and content that we produce on our media platform. So this is really my niche platform um, and webinar to discuss. And then additionally, we have Megan, who is our content marketing manager who creates all of the phenomenal blog articles that we have. Um, her and her team do a fantastic job of just providing you guys the best and most relevant and up-to-date information. So shout out to Megan. She will be running the chat. So if you guys have any questions during the webinar, um, I'm going to continue to just keep moving forward. But Megan will be answering your questions directly in the chat. And then at the end, additionally, we will also have some time for any additional questions that you guys may have. So feel free to chat it up with Megan. She's super excited to be communicating with you guys. Um, additionally, like I said, we're going to have a section at the end for any uh, questions that maybe haven't been answered or that you would like me to address out loud in front of everyone. Uh, and then additionally as well, if I do go too fast, because sometimes I can really start talking, uh, there will be a replay of this webinar that you guys will be emailed after this and you will have access to watch that on demand and share with your team or whoever um, any of this information. So don't worry, if you miss a part, you'll be able to go back to it and view. So let's go ahead and get started. I wanna take a brief moment to explain who we are and introduce ourselves. So we are Virtuance. We are a real estate photography and visual marketing company, and we're devoted to offering the world's premier real estate visual marketing solution. So we're comprised of an awesome team um, we include marketing experts and scientists and problem solvers and artists, uh, and we all strive to provide you guys, clients, our agents, uh, with consistently stunning real estate photography images, and additionally, also marketing resources to help you guys not only improve your brand, but also, in the end, helping you to win more listings. So just a brief introduction as to who we are. So what is this se session going to look like? Uh, so it's broken down into four key components. There's going to be three sections of kind of the meat and potatoes. And then at the end, we will have our uh, final closing with any questions, like I said, that we can answer and address for you guys during the live. Um, so this is really what it's going to look like. We're going to discuss overall, like, what's the importance of using social media? Like, why is there so much talk around this topic. And then additionally, we'll talk about um, setting yourself up specifically for Instagram and how to set up your profile and what that looks like. And then we'll get into what I know a lot of people are really here for is content ideas and specifically how you can take one idea 
and distribute it across a couple different media forms. All righty. So as we get into this, the big question, but why? <laughs> why do you as a realtor need social media marketing and why on earth do you need Instagram? So I want to point out two really good key reasons as to why you guys need to have a good presence on social media. So point number one, for every 10 people, seven of them are using some type of social media platform. So with about 70% of the world's population active on these social media platforms on a daily basis, you guys have the potential to easily grow your business and utilize this as a medium and a way of digital marketing for all of your listings, anything you guys are doing in real estate. So you have this huge opportunity to reach people that person to person, you really wouldn't have access to without social media. And then additionally, I want to point out that in today's world, people are using social media as a research tool. Buyers are vetting online and they're making decisions from their findings based on not only what people are saying, but essentially what's being pushed in front of them the most. I don't know if you guys have ever been on Instagram or any of the other platforms where all of a sudden you see like one ad and then you see that ad 5 million times, but that keeps that top of mind for you because you see it so often. So make sure you note that as well. Um, and I want to point out too on this topic, because buying decisions are being made online, I want you to think about how you're going to activate what I am calling the FOMO effect. Um, so as products and services start to trend online, users and anyone who's online on these platforms inherently experience this fear of missing out. That's why you see these trends just blow up because one person recommends it and then another and another, and you just have this exponential increase thus creating this massive trend for any of these products or services that you see. So for you specifically, what that means and what I mean by that is take that FOMO effect and impl implement it into what's the next hottest place to live? What about the ebbs and flows of interest rates? How can you get uh, buyers to be excited to buy in a market or sellers encouraging them to sell their home? So these are topics that you can use specifically to turn on again, what I'm calling that, that FOMO switch, that fear of missing out. So make your buyer or your seller not want to miss out on the next big thing in real estate. If you guys are kind of needing more details and specifics and topics and statistics um, on specifically why you need social media, I do want to point out that you can check out our 2022 real estate marketing trends. Um, and that breaks down all of our social media statistics as well. So I will, when we send that follow-up email, I will be sure to send that out with it. Um, but that's an amazing report. So you guys can really, again, see this true importance of social media marketing. Now, specifically, we talked about social media marketing, but why Instagram? Um, so this is huge. Again, Instagram is one of the largest platforms that's out there. It's owned by Facebook, if you didn't know. But I want to go over a couple of the key reasons on why you should be using Instagram specifically. So number one, the ability to reach new and untapped audiences. So I touched on this previously just a little bit. But Instagram, this image sharing social platform, has confirmed statistics as of about December 2021, that they are around 1 billion monthly active users. Yes, billion with a B. <laughs> that is a lot of people. Um, they actually had a 200 million user increase over a nine, nine month period due to COVID and forcing people to, again, if you were going to stay in contact with someone, you really had to be on social media. So they had some immense growth over these last couple of years. Um, additionally, there are some rumors going out that Instagram actually has 2 billion monthly active users. So that's not confirmed yet, but there are some rumors going around about that. So the point I want to make here is even if you had just a minute percentage of that audience, you can expand and grow your business immensely. So again, you're tapping and, and reaching out to all of these people who you necessarily wouldn't have access to in the first place. Number two, 
is the location of your current home buyer in that current cohort. So millennials are the generation to be targeting right now. They're the ones who are currently buying homes. Uh, so knowing that millennials are that current target, you should also note that 59% of millennials, again, your current home buyer market are on Instagram. You need to reach them on Instagram. <laughs> it's a big, a big platform that they are utilizing. And again, too, on that market too, it is a visual platform and we are vis I'm, I can speak for myself as a millennial. We are visual people. Um, so it is definitely a platform you want to be on, especially to target your current home buyer. Number three, again, I touched on this previously, but this is a public research tool. 81% of people are using Instagram to research companies and products and services. So again, they're not necessarily, not that they're not going to Google search engine, but they're really using Instagram to vet any services they're looking into, any companies they're looking into, products, restaurants, real estate agents. They won't know about your business if you aren't on the platform when they're looking to research and find more information about real estate and the real estate market and different agents. So it's important that you show up and have a presence on there so you can be lumped into that public research tool. Number four, it is a natural fit for the industry. And what do I mean by that? I mean, again, Instagram is an image sharing platform. Um, and, you know, cough, cough, you guys have so many visual images that you guys can showcase, aka the homes you're selling, the homes you're helping to buy. People want to see that. People, again, kind of tapping into that FOMO effect. People are very curious and they want to look around homes. So why not showcase and share that? So whether you know it or not, you actually already have a plethora of content that you guys are able to post. We're going into summer. We're going into a big housing season. And there's going to be lots of Instagrammable moments for you guys to capture and share with your audience. Number five, Instagram is your online resume and it's your online portfolio. So this is, again, what people are going to use to see if you're the agent for them. So use this as a way to convince them and showcase yourself, showcase your niche, so showcase your industry knowledge, your experience, your expertise. Uh, real estate social media is also used to provide, real, provide information on the real estate market. So use this as an educational opportunity for them. Also use it to build rapport in the sense of showcasing your successes. Don't be afraid to show off you know, how many listings you've either helped buy a buyer or seller get through. So use this as an opportunity to build rapport and build that credibility. And then finally, also use this as a chance to showcase you and showcase your personality. You are more than just a real estate agent. You are more than just a salesperson. And people actually are going to connect more with maybe what your different hobbies are or what your interests are. That's where people connect. So keep that in mind that you want to use this as a chance to not only showcase your professional sh professional side, but showcase your personal side as well. Increasing your lead generation. So I think we all want this to happen, right? Instagram is a great way to reach people and earn their trust um, to think of you that when they're ready to buy or sell. So the more people you reach online, the more leads you can potentially gain. The more leads you gain, the more clients you potentially have, and the more clients you have, the more money you get, right? And I think that's kind of what we're looking for is that money in the pocket. So keep in mind too, on this note, that your audience is not necessarily ready to buy on the spot. So don't necessarily think of Instagram as, okay, I have to sell, 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 sell. Think of Instagram as, my goal is to stay top of mind so that my audience, when they are ready to buy or sell a house, they're going to think of me immediately. Again, that goal is to keep yourself top of mind to increase that lead generation. Number seven, it is a free marketing platform. And who does not love free? So yes, there's opportunities to pay um, and, you know, pay with ads and boost your account and all that. But honestly, to get started, to build your account, to start posting content, to build that community, it is free. And you should definitely use that free marketing resource. 
And then finally, it's going to help you build a competitive advantage. So research shows that those who embrace new technology stand out to profit most um, for new opportunities and gain that competitive advantage. Additionally, 71% of real estate agents surveyed by us actually use social media in their entire social media marketing strategy. So keep in mind that although it's in their strategy, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're working on mastering the platform. And that's what we're here for. We're here to figure out how to dominate Instagram and set yourself up above the crowd. So just as your car and your phone and your MLS, these are all tools to succeed, so is your Instagram, and you need to know how to set it up correctly to help you gain and earn that success. So let's go ahead and dive into what the strategy looks like of how to set yourself up for success for Instagram domination. So I want you guys to think of your Instagram strategy as this ongoing loop with four key components. So it's essentially a cycle that's going to continuously feed into each other. Your first component is your foundation. So how you're going to build out and optimize your profile page. Your second is going to be your content and what you're thinking about as you're creating and pushing out your content. The third component is going to be your engagement. Not only the engagement that you receive, but showing that you are an active and valuable contributor to the online Instagram community. And then finally, your data and how you can review it and use that to work and strategize towards more content, which more engagement, again, more leads, and see how it feeds into one another. So these are your four key components for your strategy. Um, let's break down each one more specifically how to build out and optimize your profile. So don't be afraid to grab your phone uh, and kind of do this with me. If you can think that quickly on the spot, I know it would take me forever to come up with an, a username, for instance, but definitely take notes on this section so you guys can go back and edit your profile as need be afterwards. So the foundation, building out and optimizing your profile. The first element is your username, which is also referred to as your Instagram handle. So Key components to this, make it memorable and make it simple. And then additionally, you wanna make it what we're defining as evergreen, meaning that it's not going to expire. So for instance, I would recommend that you don't use your brokerage name in your handle because if on the chance you decide that you're going to switch brokerages, you have to then go back and switch your channel, your, your username and your profile page and make sure everything there is up to date, you want to have to avoid all of that. We don't want to, we don't want to deal with that. <laughs> so make it evergreen. So I've included some examples here that I think are really great. Um, Tom Ferry, we all know him, love him. First and last name, super easy peasy. Second one I want to point out, the Atlanta homegirl. Love this one. I think it makes her sound very down to earth. And it also showcases what market she's in. And then finally, the social broker. Uh, Maris focuses on real estate, social media marketing. So it makes sense as the social broker that she has that username. So those are the top three um, additional profiles we're going to break down into the other components. But I've also included a couple other uh, handles that work really well. Home with Hannah Downs, Tab the Realtor, the Denver Realtor, Ashley Austin Homes. So these are all great usernames to think of to hopefully help you guys start generating what your username could be. So now that we've got the username, we're going to add on the profile picture, <laughs> your headshot. So two main points I want to bring out with this is that it should fit your brand and it should be a close up of your face. Um, and the reason for that is because this profile picture is going to be itty bitty, teeny tiny. So you want to make sure that they can recognize your face based on that profile picture. For instance, Tom Ferry, it's close enough and you can see that he's got his distinct glasses. Atlanta, our Atlanta homegirl, she's got it nice close up to her face, bright color. And then additionally, the social broker, she is using her logo. So now you see that logo somewhere and it's, you're going to identify and recognize with that. So it should fit your brand. It should fit your face. <laughs> and then third, your Instagram story highlights. Think of these as your resources for your audience. So this is a way, again, kind of building off of that online resume and portfolio. This is a quick way for them to get information on you. So include a day in the life, include maybe a personal highlight, include a bank of tips and selling tricks and buying tricks. And then also you could even use it to include active listings that you have. 
Um, again, going over Tom Ferry's profile, his is the one in the blue. Uh, podcast, all about his podcast, his life, his personal element to it, blogs, um, the Atlanta homegirl, she's got an about me section, the closing she's done, credit tips, Maris, she's giving you real ideas, wins and tips. So again, think of your highlights as your resource. Quick tip, if you're not sure how to make something a highlight, highlights are actually comprised of stories. So you have to post something on your story and then you have to go into the settings of that and add it to a highlight. So just keep that in mind. The final component to the foundation in building out your profile is having a complete and relevant bio. So this is gonna be the set of text that appears before or below your profile picture and below your username. So I would recommend using as many lines as you can or think through. Um, so this is again, how you can briefly explain your niche and your market or a personal connection and fact. Uh, when people look at your bio, they should know instantly what you do, who you focus on, and maybe a personal fact of something that they can connect with. Be sure to refer to your industry throughout. Again, like I said, it should be very obvious that if you are a first time home buyer agent, it makes it's obvious that you are a first time home buyer agent on your bio. So keep that in mind. So now that we've got your account started up and running, I would recommend that you ask your friends and family to give you a like and a follow. Um, and ask them potentially to, to share on their profiles, just to again, help you to start slowly building that audience and building that community. So now that we've got your profile the theoretically set up, right? Uh, maybe you did it while we were discussing through it, that's awesome. But I know the next question we're all kind of talking about is, well, my gosh, Rachel, what, what do I post? Like what content, how do I think about the content I should be posting? The goal of your content should be to build brand awareness and grow an active and engaged audience. So when you're thinking about that and thinking about the content you need to create, I want you to, number one, fully understand your uniqueness. What value do you specifically bring to the table and provide as a real estate agent? As a getting started tip, because I know sometimes it sometimes gets hard to think through that on our own, um, just like it's really hard to write a bio about yourself. If you're struggling with your specific uniqueness, I would suggest asking, asking a friend or a colleague, someone who has seen you in action, have them ask or ask them, you know, what do you think I specifically provide as value? Because they see it from a perspective that you don't necessarily see. So don't be afraid to ask someone. Number two, know your niche and know your target audience. So who is that specific buyer persona you are going after? Who are you trying to reach? Think outside of just, well, all home sellers and home buyers. Are you specific to veterans and military services and helping them find their homes after being on active duty? Are you specific towards first time home buyers? Think about that as your buyer persona. Additionally, how are you going to solve their problems? Think through that and think that's how your content can actually address and answer any problems that they may be having in the buyer or seller market. Next, stay on brand. Um, I'm going to also say this with the caveat as, as this doesn't necessarily mean you have to always stay on topic. Um, so everything should cohesively work together. Your, business and real estate agent brand is very similar to your personal brand because essentially you're selling yourself, right? So when I say stay on brand, but not necessarily on topic, what I mean is you don't always have to post a just listed or a just sold. Post about your hobbies, post about you doing something fun. Because like I said earlier, those personal elements, those are your connector elements. And that's how you're going to grow community and grow audiences because you're going to find people who have very similar interests and values as you. And those are going to be the people who are going to turn into your potential leads. Number four, I want you to think like the algorithm. I don't know if you've ever heard this, but marketers use it all the time. Think like the algorithm. What that means is I want you to think about what is naturally already being promoted on the platform. Currently right now with Instagram, 
short term, short form video is feeding the beast of content. So I want you to think about those elements. So when you start creating content, because Instagram is pushing video content, you also should be pushing video content. So think about how you can transform those topics, answer those questions, talk about your hobbies in video form so that the platform naturally is going to start push, pushing and promoting on your behalf. Um, another tip I want to give you is if you want to keep staying on trend and on topic with what's going on, a great resource to follow is the head of Instagram himself, Adam Masori. Um, I believe his Instagram username is just at Masori. Every week he is giving you videos about the newest features that are coming out on Instagram. And that gives you insight as to what your content should be formatted like, what it should look like, because he's literally giving you exactly what they're pushing out and coming out with. And number five, when you think about your content, I want you to promote natural engagement. So you want your audience to not only see your content, but you want them to actually interact and, and engage with it, right? Um, so to do this, relevant hashtags. So it does not matter if you do five, it does not matter if you do 30, that is up to your discretion. But the most important factor with using hashtags is that they are relevant to whatever topic you are discussing. Hashtags make you searchable. So again, going back to Instagram being a public research tool, you wanna make sure that they can find you on whatever topic they are searching for. If it's a real estate marketing tip, if it's a home buyer tip, those are all opportunities to use those hashtags to make you searchable on the platform. Additionally, use highly engageable formats. So for instance, we just discussed that Instagram is pushing video content. That's the content that's gonna be the most engageable. Additionally, carousels do really well because naturally people swipe to view through those. So think about it that way and how you can promote these highly engageable formats to promote a natural engagement from your audience and from your users. Speaking of engagement, uh, not only should your content be engaging, but you yourself should be engaging as well with others. I know this can be a beast. <laughs> These social media companies, they wanna see that you are act an active participant on their platforms. Now, this does not mean you need to spend hours upon hours upon hours engaging, right? I know for a fact, if you're on social media, you are naturally doing it probably 10 to 15 minutes a day. Just lump your engagement strategy into that 10 to 15 minutes that you're already using the platform. You don't have to do extra, you don't have to take out extra time, but definitely understand that this is an opportunity for you to engage both ways. So Megan just informed me there is a audience question about how do we know when the algorithm changes? So like I said, Adam Masori, the head of C the CEO of Instagram, he is coming out with constant updates. So like I said, I would definitely recommend following him because he's going to tell you flat out that hey, Instagram is now experiencing with longer term, longer form video, right? So he's going to tell you when the algorithm is changing. So definitely follow him. The account that was mentioned for us to follow for tips. Oh, um, yes. And the account to follow, like I said, is Adam Masori. His last name is M-O-S-S-E-R-I. That's how you spell his last name. So Look him up on Instagram. Like I said, he's going to keep you updated with all of the tips and tricks and what is changing and what is new. Okay, back to engagement. So the last couple of points I want to make when it comes to engagement is that you want to be vulnerable. Show that real estate is not necessarily always about the highlights, but there are struggles too. I want you to be authentic. Don't just comment because you feel like you have to comment. If you have a natural reaction to it, like if you genuinely laugh out loud, comment with the laughing out loud emojis, right? So it should all feel natural. And additionally, be supportive. If you're on a team, showcase and share your team's successes. That promotes them to do the same. And don't be afraid to, or hesitant to post content that you find valuable that you did not necessarily create. Okay, and then going over the data. 
So this is also a little bit of a beast, but I want to break it down into a couple of key components for you guys so you can understand how to read and understand your data. So ultimately, your data is going to show how your content is performing on the platform. So reviewing and understanding this can tell you potentially what times to post, what content you're pushing that works the best, that you should be pushing more, and how far your reach is. So some metrics I want you guys to follow, and I'll kind of walk you through how to find those metrics when you're on Instagram. Impressions. Impressions is going to be the number of times your post or an ad, if you choose to do so, appears on a screen, period. So for instance, if I'm scrolling and your ad pops up on my end three times, that's three impressions. Reach, the total number of unique users um, of people who have viewed your content. So I like to look at reach a little bit further than impressions because I think reach is more so in comparison to the people who actually stop and view my content. It's not something they just blindly scroll by, right? So think of reach that way. And then finally, your content interactions. This is also known as your engagements. So it's the total number of engagements that a piece of, or a post or a story, how many they receive. So for instance, if, you're, if you post something and you get five shares, five likes, five contents, that's 15 content interactions. So I want those to be the metrics that you guys look into. To find them, number one, you have to have a business account. So if your Instagram profile is not currently set up as a business account, I need you to go to your settings and flip it over to do so. Because that's how you're going to get your insights. And that's what we're looking for here. So to find your insights, you're going to head to your profile page, the one that we just set up. And you should, be, you should have an option below, like these five buttons. They might not necessarily be those exact buttons, but you should have one that says insights. And this is going to take you to your insights dashboard that you can poke and peek around. Um, this is only part of it. You can scroll and see more insights as you so choose, but it's going to tell you the accounts that you have reached. 100,000, right? And then the accounts you get that have engaged with your content, 100,000, and the total number of followers. And it's going to show whether you've gained followers or you unfortunately lost followers, which we hope that's not the case. But head to your insights again, profile page, insights button, and it will take you to your insights dashboard and overview to look at. Okay. Now we're in. Now that we've kind of understood this loop and this content strategy and how you can use that to feed into each other, let's specifically break down content ideas. <laughs> because I know that's a whole other thought process to think about the actual content that you guys are going to create. There are so many opportunities for you guys to create and distribute content especially being in real estate. Like I said, it's a natural fit for the industry. You have so much that you can talk about. There's millions of ideas that we could go over. Um, but essentially what I want to do is I want to take three and I want to break them down for you into how you can take one idea and make it multiple posts or multiple media formats of posting. So the three we're going to go over is showcasing your neighborhood, tips for buyers and sellers, and then your property listing professional images. So number one, the concept, the content idea is showcasing your neighborhood. So why should you be, why, should, why is this a good one? Um, so this is also going to showcase your local experience, right? And then this is also a chance for you to optimize your content and collaborate with others. So you could collaborate with a business to do an Instagram live or a story or whatever it may be. And that helps you tap into that business's audience. Again, that's an audience that you may not have yet that you'll be able to tap into. So let's break it down on what this looks like if I were to post this throughout uh, Instagram. So as a reel, again, our short form videos are dominating the the content beast right now. So for a reel, I want you to use this as a chance to walk through and highlight the local neighborhood or local events that are happening, such as farmers markets or a community event. This is again, going to showcase your local knowledge and it's going to show your audience like, wow, this is actually a really cool place to live. The next format, a post, what is showcasing the neighborhood look like? as a post. 
So this can be so simple. All you have to do is go to your favorite local coffee shop, snap a picture of you with your favorite cup of coffee and giving a shout out to that business. The hope there is that the business will then reshare that post for you. Again, you're going to reach a new audience by doing that. It showcases a personal element that you love coffee or potentially whatever business you decide to highlight that day. But again, this doesn't have to be difficult. It is a simple picture of you snapping. It could even just be the cup of coffee if you really wanted to, if you didn't necessarily want to be in it. Um, that's another note we can talk about in a second. But make it simple. Just highlight, a bus- highlight one of your favorite businesses that you're already going into. What does it look like to showcase your neighborhood as a story? Use this opportunity to, again, promote that natural engagement. So I want you to use this to post a poll. You're going to ask your audience if they've been to the particular business that you just posted about in your post. So for instance, going back to the coffee shop, shout out, love, I'm going to say Starbucks, love Starbucks. Um, Have you been here? Like, have you, or have you tried this drink and your poll, all it has to say is yes or no, or you can make it fun and be like, heck yes, I did. Or no, I haven't, but I will. This is going to be so easy for your audience to engage with because all they have to do is tap a button. They don't have to type out a reply. They don't have to make a video. They just have to tap, which again is going to boost your engagement. And then finally, another format to look at is your Instagram live. So again, this is an opportunity for you to collaborate. So I want you to host a live conversation with a local organization or a business owner. This is your chance to just discuss Uh, what they love about being in that particular area, that particular neighborhood. Um, Maybe it's an opportunity for you to showcase what you love and what you've heard people love about their specific business. Again, it's, it's that collaboration effort. So that's one idea, right? You're showcasing the neighborhood. And now you've got four different pieces of content that you can post. So let's move on to the next idea. Tips for buyers and sellers. Now this is my... Uh, time to share with you that we do have free Canva templates. You guys can access those when you click. There should be a green button at the bottom of of your screen that says download free template. Um, So this is your chance to download those. They literally, one of the styles is this exactly. It's already set up for you guys. You'll need a free Canva account. It's super easy and intuitive to use, but all you have to do is just open up one of those templates and you can start using it to create your own content. You can change the fonts and colors if you want, but We've already done all the hard work and created those templates for you. So using those templates, back to our content idea, tips for your buyers and sellers. So again, as a real, I want you to answer the top 10 common questions um, that your buyer or seller are currently asking, questioning, whatever it may be. So for instance, if you know there are top, there's the top 10 mistakes a seller can make when preparing their home. That's what you can say during your reel, right? Super easy, very quick. And you already know, again, this is going to showcase your industry knowledge. As a post, again, we're going to promote that natural engagement and we are going to create a seller. The first slide is going to say how to prepare your home, for instance, right? And then your next two or three slides are just the answers to that question. So for instance, we just took that reel and we said, hey, These are the top 10 common questions or mistakes that sellers make in preparing their home for sale. Well, now we're going to turn it into a post and say, this is how you should actually prepare your home for sale. Again, people are naturally going to swipe through that because they want that information. Your story, what does that look like? Just like these can, just like these templates show, just give them a buyer and seller checklist. What should they be doing that they can literally just screenshot that and check off their list to prepare their home or whatever the tip that you are providing is. Additionally, you could also use this as a poll to say, have you followed these tips? Again, promoting that natural engagement. And then your Instagram live. So joining together with a mentor or another realtor to discuss the basics of the home buying or home selling process. Again, you're providing that value. You are providing the information that your audience needs. And this is a chance for you to tap into someone else's audience and collaborate. So that's breaking down a second content idea that has now been distributed 
into four different media posts. So finally, our professional listing images. This is our third content idea. Like I mentioned before, people, people are curious and they want to look through these homes. So what does that look like as an Instagram reel? Do a behind the scenes look of your professional listing photo shoot. This is easy. You're already there, right? Highlight your photographer. This is fun because again, this gives people that quick inside tip. You could even showcase it as a, this is coming to market soon and give people that heads up, right? Give them that FOMO. Hey, the newest home in the hottest area right now is this one. So this is your chance to use that real idea. Your post, it's a perfect time to showcase those professional listing images that you just received, right? Again, people are naturally curious. All this has to be is a walkthrough of the home. The first picture could just be the out exterior of the home like this, and the following pictures can be the interior. People are naturally gonna engage with that because they're already curious. As a story, post of this or that. This is where you're gonna ask them about their styling preferences. So for instance, it could be a, hey, do you prefer a walk-in pantry or would you prefer a walk-in closet, right? Those are the types of questions you're gonna ask about a home's features and what someone would prefer in that design element aspect of it. And finally, an Instagram live again, uh, host a live that addresses how a homeowner can prepare their listing for their professional photo shoot. So again, this is a chance if you want, you could do it by yourself or you could collaborate with someone else um, to host this Instagram live. All right, my final tips before we wrap up. It does not have to be perfect. You guys just need to get started on this platform. Like I said, your current home buyers are there, um, your market's there, you can build an audience and build rapport with people. Plus it's fun when you really start to get into it. Some additional tips on how to optimize either a post or whatever it is that you are addressing as far as content. If you can, always use a location that'll help increase your reach. Um, additionally, the hashtags, like I said, it doesn't matter if you use five or 30, just make sure they're relevant tag any appropriate users. So if you're doing collaborations, make sure that you are tagging those users as well so they can share via their platforms, um, mention any vendors. And like I said, I think the biggest thing here is that it, it doesn't have to take a ton of time and effort. Um, the process of, of creating these posts and engaging with your current audience, it can be fun and it can be really rewarding. So at the end of the day, your goal is to have an Instagram presence that you work on daily even if it's just briefly, just the, a little bit of time that you can give to it to get users engaged in what you have to offer. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just gotta get started. You can do it. This is one of my favorite memes, so I had to share. <laughs> so this is my chance. I want to open up the floor to you guys. I know we're wrapping up on time, um, but I wanna make sure that we are answering any questions that you guys may have as far as content. If you have an idea, feel free to share it um, and we can go over that as well. So I wanna just take a brief pause and have you guys go ahead and type in the comment section any questions that I can address for you. Thank you, Shannon. <laughs> I try to keep these entertaining, you know? I want to make sure you guys are engaged in this. Ray, to rewatch this. So when we're done, we're going to actually upload and send you guys a follow up email that will include a link to rewatch this webinar. Okay, I've got some questions in our little question section. Do you recommend posting on Instagram and sharing the post to Facebook or posting on um, Instagram and Facebook separately? I'm going, that is, so a lot of the questions you'll find in the social media realm are very much based on what works best for you. So as much as I wanna say post a separate Instagram post from your Facebook, Sometimes with, if you guys are just getting started, maybe it is easiest for you to just post on Instagram and share via Facebook, right? The goal is to not burn yourself out. The goal is to get started. And I would actually recommend in that instance, 
master one platform at a time. So just start with mastering Instagram. And if that means you start with a post on Instagram and you just share that exact same post to Facebook, fine, so be it. But once you master Instagram, then you can focus on the next platform that's going to help you promote your business. I get a lot of comments saying share to blank, blank, blank. Are these legit? No, <laughs> those are spam. <laughs> so the reason you get a lot of those spams is because um, when hashtags start getting millions and millions and millions of posts associated with them, these spammer accounts latch onto that. So then they, they basically have these bots that come in and if your post has, for instance, just hashtag real estate, they're immediately gonna filter in and share the share to this current page, but those are spam. How do I set up hashtags? Um, so the, a good way to start is again, like I said, it doesn't matter if you need five or 30, um, but how you're actually gonna set them up is when you're typing out your captioning in Instagram, you're literally just gonna type the hashtag symbol and then you're gonna follow that with whatever the actual phrase is. So for instance, if you're saying hashtag real estate, you're gonna type hashtag and then real estate, but make sure there are no spaces because that will make it an, an active hashtag. If you space out between real estate, between real and estate, it's gonna be hashtag real, right? It's not gonna connect the estate to it. So the importance when you're setting up hashtags, type that hashtag symbol and make sure everything is pushed together with no spacing. Okay, is there a certain amount of posts a day you would recommend? So like I said, it's all about how you wanna get started, right? So if it's easiest for you to post twice a week, then post twice a week. The bigger important factor to that is whatever you start, make sure you stay consistent with it. So if you're like, I'm gonna get into this in hardcore full force, I'm gonna post three times a day, every single day, you're gonna burn yourself out. So again, maybe two to three posts a week, try to do, but just make sure you're doing two to three posts every single week to remain consistent and show your audience that you are always active. Okay, I think I have answered all the questions. Um, so again, thank you guys so much for joining us on this webinar. If you do have a question and I missed it, one, I'm so sorry. Um, but two, when you get that follow-up email, feel free to respond and I will answer your question back to you. Uh, we're going to send all the different resources we use to create this webinar. And additionally, you will have a replay of the webinar as well to refer back to and to share. So thank you guys so much for your time. Uh, we appreciate it here on behalf of Virtuance. Uh, give us a follow, Virtuance Photography. That's us on Instagram. And then you can just search Virtuance Real Estate Photography on um, LinkedIn and Facebook. Give us a follow. We're always providing new marketing tips and tricks on our website, so check that out. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week. And I can't wait to see how you guys all dominate on Instagram.